Welcome back to another tutorial and how we are using space syntax to evaluate the street network. In assignment three, you have two tasks. First, evaluate a smaller town, Townsville, in Northern Australia, where you can try and error a couple of um, adjustments of the street network and what that means. And then do the same thing for Melbourne. It is not really important which street network you're using. You can also make your own, find your own online, either through open street network or other sources. The important part is that you are learning what impact a change to the street network has on the built environment. You can increase the flow in certain areas or decrease it. You can increase the local flow like pedestrians or you can increase the global flow like cars. And to do that, you are learning now how to evaluate the network towards certain parameters and how to adjust them. We open up DevMap, which is a, a open source software and I will put the link to where you can find that source into the doodly doos below. Then we create a new map. So we go into File, New, and this is our new environment. The next step is that we import whatever network you have. I put that onto my desktop where Townsville is, and I have different file formats. I encourage you to use Townsville MIF, which is a map interchange format which keeps all the georeferencing within. I imported it, and what you can see is now that we have a um, network visible with many colors. The computer doesn't know yet what this is, so we have to tell him. So we convert, to be in maps, we convert the active map into a segment map. Each road segment is a segment, and uh, the computer now understands he created a new data map or a shape graph map, which has the, uh, the segment map. In here, you then have different attributes on the left. You see the reference number, the angle of connectivity, the actual reference line, the connectivity, and the segment length. Segment length is self-explanatory. It's the length of each one of those lines. The second one is connectivity. That means how many lines are connected to it. And you can see the ones which are in a grid or even more than a grid um, are darker or redder or more active because they have more connections. So this is the first step. I encourage you here at the top, I go to recenter the view. And to test if your network is actually viable, you can select one of the segments. See now it's yellow. And then you go onto map into tools and make angular step command D. What this does, it basically calculates how many steps, how many road segments it has to traverse to get to every step. And you see at the beginning it's all blue, gets brighter, gets into the yellows, and then it gets into the reds. And some elements are gray. These gray elements are not connected to the element which we selected. So if you are drawing something, test if what you are actually drawing is connected with this method. Then we go to the next one and we're actually going to run a segment, angular segment analysis. This is where uh, depth map is actually running an analysis. It makes what we just done with a couple of segments for every segment. It runs this evaluation from one segment to all the other segments. So I go for this interface. The first part at the top is how accurate, how fine grained it evaluates the angular change at each intersection. We can either split the 360 degrees in 1,024 pi segments, or we can just make it into 32 or 64, whatever your preference is. The smaller the number, the less refined the result is. Mostly 64 will be sufficient. Alternatively, you go full angular, which makes it sl slower. The second thing is, 
I would tick this box, including choice, because this is the choice value which gives you the busyness of each one of those road segments. The second thing is the radii. And metric is a very good way to include different modes of transportation. So we start with something, let's say, 400 meter for the distance children can walk, 800 meters, the distance we mostly walk to public transport, two and a half kilometers, small cycling rides, five kilometers, large cycling rides, 25 kilometers for road and in is everything. We also want to include something which weights the individual distances by the length. So we do segment length weighted and then we press OK to run it. Now the whole evaluation starts. This takes a while. Use this time to think about what you want to actually do. First, identify a goal. What do you want to achieve? Do you want to improve the walkability around schools? What does that mean? The second step is find a metric which can identify that you achieved this goal. For example, increasing the integration measure around schools at the radii of 800 meters. Then try to adjust the network. And we will do that while going into Rhino. We have to wait now five minutes. So we go and open Rhino. Make a new model. I move this away. And let's import the data file we have. Dance will. We open this one here, the Townsville DXF. The important part here is that the units are not changing. So the model units and the layout units should be the same. Model units are in meters, layout units are in meters. We open it and sometimes it works perfectly and it zooms everything into the right corner. What do you have here is four views. The top view, the front view, the right view, and the perspective view. Of course, the front and the right are planar views from the side. And since we don't have any kind of 3D geometry, it's just a flat plane. Mostly you can work on the top view. Because of that, we can just double tap the top. And we have a full screen. We only have one of the views. If you want to go back, you can either double tap or you can click above to the four again, or you go back to the one. You can zoom in and you see now the street network. What you want to do is you want to add or remove a couple of lines. Removing is easy. You select and you press delete and the line is gone. Adding is not as difficult either. You have a starting point here, or you can also just go and add the line, a polyline or a line. So add a line. And the important part here is that you have always snapped to the end, because what you want is that they are connected. You want to connect this line with that line. And we do that again. You can also type in L and the first thing that comes is line and press enter. I didn't connect it yet because I would like to make an intersection at this point. All 
right. Since we have now these lines, we can just export this whole Townsville, which we created with the additional lines, and import it back into your depth map environment. How do you do that? With export, and you want to export not just any format, you want to have a DXF file. There's other ones which you could, but the best way or like the most common way is using a DXF file. Put that onto the, let's call it Townsville 2. I prefer to export it with lines, so 2004 lines, but that's, I think, not necessary. It will work regardless. Let's go back to our environment. It's still going. Alternatively, what we can do is fire up a second instance of the same software. You do that by in Mac by copy-pasting the same software and save it with a different name. So I have a couple of versions here, just in case, and I can open these up and I get a second instance. It's always a bit tedious because you have to keep in mind that you have one already running and that you know which one you're working in. So we do exactly the same thing, file new, map, import, and this time we choose the Townsville 2. Let's make this large. And even though sometimes you might not see the file, the individual lines, they're still there. So we convert the drawing map, we make a, a segment map, and let's go and zoom into the area which we adjusted. And then voila, you can see the individual lines I drew beforehand. They're now here. And you can now figure out if that has an impact or not. What I would like to show you now is how to export what you see. The first thing, the first and easiest way is that you export an EPS. So you make export screen in edit, export screen, and you save a EPS. An EPS is a format that can be read by Illustrator. It's a vector-based format, and it's, it keeps all the colors, so to speak, together. The drawback is it doesn't have a scale. It, you don't know where you are in the map. Alternatively, you can export the map with all of the attributes as a uh, map inter interchange file and take it into QGIS. So you make map, export, and not as a TXF text file, but you export it as a map info file. So our evaluation is now finished. What you see here is that we have the first value. We have the individual parameters on the left side. So we have new parameters created. We have the choice values and the integration values. Choice means how busy a road is. Integration is how central a road is. And what we are seeing here first is the choice without a number, which means the choice over the whole network. And what you see is that you can see the highways and the major um, roads surrounding Townsville being the most busiest for global flow. If you go to smaller radii, let's say 800 meters, you can see that the neighborhood roads are much more busy, which are much more frequented by pedestrians. An intermediate value, like the 5,000 value, shows you where cycling is probably very prominent. On the other side, you have the integration values. Where are places well integrated into the network as a whole?
and the northeastern edge of town is quite red in comparison to other places. Let's see how well integrated areas are for pedestrians. And here we get to a point where you have to think about what you see. It is quite difficult to make a evaluation about 800 meters. You see that there's a couple of lines which are gray. The reason for this is that they are mostly longer than 800 meters. So it's not a very feasible evaluation if you don't split those lines smaller. But we do it anyway because this is about how you use these measures. The second thing is that most of the lines are sort of dull. So you have to adjust the color range. You go into Windows, Color Range, and you adjust the slider on the right side at the bottom to make everything above 300, for example, being red. So these are the two kind of colors. Everything below the value at the top is going to be blue. Everything above the value at the bottom is going to be red. And we see the little neighborhoods coming to life. The top one I want to uh, also mention is that you can also change what kind of uh, color scheme you're going to use. Blue to red, purple to orange, grayscale, monochrome, it's up to you. Don't overdo it with the colors. Let's export that again as Townsville and as MIF file. Because I would like to show you how to take this into your QGIS. You open QGIS, you open a new plane field, And you add the layer, it's a vector layer. You browse for that file you just had, Townsville, and it's this one here. You add, close. And what you see is now that you have in your QGIS the lines you had before. And it's not just that, if you go into your attribute table, you see that all of the values you had before are there as well. Let's color code this. Go into your symbols, graduate it, choose what kind of indicators you would like to throw. For example, choice 5000, classify, and we're going to make something like dark to bright, yellow, apply, and you see all most of the colors are a bit low, so we have to change the distribution, e not equal interval, but equal count, apply, looks much better. And the beauty about this is that you can also just add a background map. So you add, let's say, Google. Open street map, place it below, and everything is in the same reference system. You might say this is not really readable at this point, and I agree. So you want to change the open street map maybe into something like a grayscale, make it a bit darker. Or even more. There you go. And you see the bright areas are well integrated while the other ones are not. That's it for this week. You should have learned how to make a segment analysis in depth map, additionally how to adjust the graph in Rhino, and then take it into uh, GIS, QGIS, or you export it as an EPS file. Hope you enjoyed this and see you next week for the next tutorial.